Well, not all contract transactions for ag goods function smoothly. With the number of crops and livestock varying in quality and size, there can be nonconformity issues. Joining us now is Roger McOwen with the Washburn University School of Law. Thanks for joining us, Roger. And from the buyer's perspective, what rights does the buyer have if a seller breaches a contract? Well, good morning, Christina. Good to be with you. And this, this is a big issue in agriculture, and sometimes I, I don't think farmers fully think this through, how important having proper contracts in place can be. But one of the ways in which a breach can occur is if the contracted for goods fail to conform to the contract requirements. And that's a big issue for contracts involving agricultural goods, such as crops and livestock, because they're not standard cookie-cutter goods. They vary in quality and size and shape and germination rate and moisture content, for example. So all of that needs to be thought through when you're entering into contracts involving those types of agricultural goods. You're so right about the importance of the contract and the language that is included, which is why professionals are such a big part of putting these contracts together. Talk about when a nonconformity is significant enough to constitute a breach. Well, that is a, that, that's really the key point. And you can reject, as a buyer, you have the right to reject nonconforming goods if the nonconformity substantially impairs the contract. And that's the key. And that means it's also uh, fact-based. What is a substantial nonconformity in one instance may be just a trivial defect in another instance. So it's really tied to industry custom and past practices between the parties and the nature of the goods involved in the contract. It is a heavily fact-dependent question. What are some of the time frames involved for exercising remedies? How long would this take? Well, this is where it's really beneficial to have a written contract, because if you have a written contract, you have a longer period of time within which to sue for breach of contract. Generally, um, actions founded on contract have to be filed within you know, five to ten years. For unwritten contracts, you basically have about three to five years. So it gives you more time to discover a defect and then file a lawsuit. So you're, that's another benefit of having a written contract as opposed to one that's just simply oral. Okay, now you always bring us some great examples. Can you give us one that we can learn from today? Well, let me give you two quick ones. One uh, was a New York case in 1995. You had a farmer that uh, harvested potatoes and that was he was a potato farmer and he sold them to a potato chip manufacturer. And, of course, with respect to potatoes, color is absolutely critical. And he thought he had complied with the contract requirements. He had the right color of potatoes, but they got rejected. And uh, the court upheld the rejection based on an eyeball test as to color. And the farmer was trying to say, well, the computer test shows I'm within the contract specs. And the court said, no, nah, industry standard is the eyeball standard. And so that was up to the buyer. That's a tough one. more recent one in Nebraska had to do with the color of cattle. And the individual wanted uh, black uh, steers. He got some red ones. There were too many red ones in the batch. That was outside the contract specification. And the court said color of steers was a non-trivial defect. And uh, that was a substantial defect that impaired the contract. So uh, two cases involving color, one involving steers and one involving potatoes. So <laughs> interesting ways these things come up in egg. Absolutely. Thank you so much for always keeping us educated. Roger McGowan with the Washburn University School of Law. We always appreciate hearing from you.